What's going on, fam? It's your boy KP, and I'm back with another video. All praise and credit due to the Most High God and His Son, Yeshua Hamashiach. I'm trying to tell you in these last days, man, King Jesus is the greatest one to ever do it. If you're watching my videos, do me a favor now. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit the notification bells. You're more than welcome to share this video on any of your platforms. Um, the name of this video is going to be Learn to Recognize Satan's Character. All right, Ken, how do I learn to recognize Satan's character? So I want to tell you that this end times vision and, and what the world is experiencing now, God gave it to me in a vision, not a dream. I was wide awake when this happened. It was actually daylight outside. Um, I went through the persecution that the world is going through independent in my life. Um, I realized when I came face to face to Satan, he showed me how he has been through me since been with me my entire life through birth. Like when you're born and God has a plan for you. And this is like until age 39, I was an atheist. And it wasn't until I met King Jesus when I was 44 years old um, that I knew he was real. So I had a couple phases in my awakening. First phase, I knew God was real. Um, second phase, I knew Jesus was real. But, you know, if I, the like the last three years of my gang stalking is where the supernatural stuff like really became present. And Satan knows when God's about to anoint you. So, you know, he puts things in your path your entire life to deter you from the truth um, and to lead you away from God. So, he, he uses sin. Like I didn't believe in sin until I went to heaven and was in the presence of God and, and, and the apostles and got the anointing, which is like the word of God written on my heart and my mind. It was like a cable was supernaturally hooked to my head. And he was telling me and downloaded his, his word into my head. But, um, I know what this world is going through because I've been through it. And in the past three years, right before the anointing moment, which came, you know, right after I came face to face with Satan, man, you have to learn to recognize Satan character. Um, some of you guys have been with me from the beginning, like on my last channel, all that truth, they deleted it. And then I had to start another channel. Um, but I want to tell you that like, I know Satan just as well as I know God, probably even better because I've spent more time with Satan and, and came face to face. And, you know, he spent more time killing me like God's God's anointing is more instant. Satan's got to put a lot of effort into destroying your spirit before he can get to your soul. But when God wants to save you, it can be instant. So, you know, the, the last couple moments, I want to focus on like recognizing Satan and the, and the way he reveals himself to you when he has had a target on your back your entire life. So for me, it was kind of like, you know, I met Jezebel, I met Baphomet, I met Moloch, I met Azazel and Satan. And he's kind of like, yeah, these been, I didn't put my top generals on you your whole life. Like this bad relationship was Jezebel like this, that he mocks you. Um, I've had medical things happen to me. He told me it was all him. Um, and then, you know, like the straw that broke the camel's back was, and now I'm going to kill you. You know, he offered, he offered me a deal for my soul. And, you know, I was taken to the mountaintop and shown these kingdoms, right? It's like the stuff I wanted, right? You can have this, you can have this, but you know, once I refused, that's when he was like, I'm gonna kill you and kill your daughter. Um, and by then, you know, my spirit was beaten down so much that I'm like, well, like, like God hadn't given me the full anointing right there. He gave me just enough so I could make an, an informed decision on what I was going to do with my soul. Um, and through this process of Satan, like the last step he does is he reveals all of his tactics and the thing he's done to you. And for me, you know, it was like the sickness, the bad relationships, like you haven't been able to find a wife because of me. Like, um, 
I destroyed this. I destroyed your business. I've, I've separated you from your kids. All your friends that have been around you have been my people. They've been Judas's. Um, and he's like, now I'm going to kill you. But, you know, the funny thing is like how, and I say the funny thing because like now I can look on it. I can look back on it going, man, Satan is the most sickest, sadistic, evil character person um, you could ever imagine. Like he is the, he's the king of being evils. I won't even say king. He's the prince of darkness. Like he's the head, like the most evil being there could ever be. And the only way to overcome the, the, the biggest liar in the world is with the biggest truth teller in the world. And that's why King Jesus is the truth, the life and the way. But so like, I want to focus on like, when he took me to that mountaintop, I never forget. So he showed me this king, you could have this, you could have this, you could have this. Like he wanted me to be a spiritual leader that led people astray, you know, but I was going to have business to money, this, that, and the other. Um, but the funny thing is, is like, as when, when demon possessed people, when Azazel was gang stalking you, like Satan, what he offered me like a year income, he had offered the demons like twice that amount if they killed me. Like that was like, that's how sick he is. Like he wanted to take the, make sure I didn't get the anointing. But what he offered me was only half of what he, he, whoever had got me to commit suicide or got me to commit the triple murder they wanted me to do. Um, they was going to get double of what he offered me. Like that, that's, that's how sick he is. Um, but he, he also reminds you of he wouldn't have been able to do all of these things had you had your God. And he laughs at you. He ain't never going to tell you the truth. It's kind of truth is something you arrive at. And, and, and it's something that is very good. It's going to be very personal in your life because Satan has, he's tailored the persecution to what will work on you. Everybody's not afraid of the same thing. Some people, he might use your kids. Some people might use your life. Some people use their career. Some people he uses their health, but they're all based in, in, in scaring you. And really it's, you know, about dying or a part of you dying, but let's see, how do you, how do you say this? So he's going to reveal these things to the world at the end. And I'm very fortunate because like when, you, when I went to the kingdom of God, God reveals the entire plan to you and you know it in advance. And that's what Satan didn't want me to have because the, the anointing is something when you have the truth, it's so raw that your words are so powerful, but the power, the power in the words come from the testimony you have of overcoming Satan. And, um, He's doing this to the world now, and I see it, man. I, I went to I went to pick up some food and and it starts like this. You know, I walk into I went to go get a Papa John's pizza and I walk in just to pick it up and she's like, Sir, you gotta have a mask on, like da 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 da. And I was like, you know, I'm I'm like, does that make any sense to you that you know people can eat in restaurants, but if you're picking up something, you have to have a mask on. And I'm just trying to get people to arrive at the truth, and they are so resistant to even say, and I'm not saying do something different. I realize we live in, in, in Caesar's world and this is, and this Satan runs this world. So there's certain things we have to do. I just want you to say it don't sound right. And that is how you arrive at the truth. It's a personal thing. So when things don't look like in the world, you have to believe yourself over what everybody else is telling you like Satan is the father of lies and he, he is going to do something sick like this. Cause it's the same format. I've, I've went through it. Um, so he'll do something like he likes to laugh at you at the end, right before he kills you. It's kind of like how a cat plays with a mouse, like smacks it around and, and does that for a few hours and then kills it. Like that's how Satan is. But so, but we're on an extended time frame. So he'll do things like, um, I can imagine him. Well, not imagine him. This is how he did me. I'm going to just metaphor it to, to current world times. 
he'll tell you he'll tell you something like this like yeah man <laughs> that 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 virus and everything that was on the news when you were scared he was like he's like you lost your job huh he's like yeah that was horrible huh you had some you had some kids they graduated they didn't even get to have a graduation huh he's like they didn't get to have a graduation cuz that virus was going on it was hot right you live where it's hot it's 100 degrees you had to wear a mask on you could barely breathe right you lost your job. You lost. They repoed your car. Your cable bills were late. You were stressed out. You were stressed out out of your mind. It caused a divorce with your family. You were so stressed out. You didn't pay. You didn't pay your your mortgage or your rent for three months, and then they evicted you when you was on the street, huh? And then they showed they showed they, they they showed you something on TV, and it looked like a race war, but. That made you hate people, didn't it? It made you hate people, right? So you wasn't you wasn't loving your neighbor as yourself, were you? Because you saw something on TV, right? You probably got rid of some friends you had your whole life because that hate started boiling in your heart. And then you just like cut them off, even though they really didn't do nothing wrong to you. You just had like a disagreement of a polarized view, whether it was race or, or politics or something like that, right? He was like, he was like, and, you know, your grandma was probably so scared of the coronavirus that she needed some surgery and didn't get it. And then she ended up dying. Right. And, and, you know, it, it pretty much ruined your life, just the coronavirus. And, he was, and then he'll laugh at you. He'll be like, <laughs> he'll be like, yeah, that was all me. You want to know the funny part? The virus wasn't even real. So you lost your house, you lost your car, you lost your job, you lost your relationship, your kid, your five-year-old didn't have a birthday party. You know what I mean? Your senior in high school didn't have a graduation. You guys didn't go to the water parks and hang out. You didn't do none of that. He's like, the virus wasn't even real. He'll be like, the only, the only reason you believed my lies is because you didn't have your God with the truth. He was like, that's what I do. All these people are in my pockets. I got them all. And then he'll laugh at you. But he's not even done. That's the funny thing. He's not even done. I've been telling y'all what phase two is. I told you. I'm not even sure which video it is, but if y'all have been with me, I told you phase two was going to be restricting communications and starving people out like famine, right? But people are like, oh, there's no famine. There's no famine. The crops are growing. Look, man, you have to look at spiritual meanings of words. A famine just means you can't eat. So if the grocery store is closed down or ground beef is soon $40 a pound, that's a famine. But they're controlling the famine. That's the funny thing. Um, You know, people want to say things like there's a conspiracy theory and oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. The biggest conspiracy of the world is when Satan tricked Eve. That's how it started. Like, and then he deceived the entire world through the the entire world through their lust for greed. So I realize this is hard for some people to understand that. That, so, Ken, you're saying the whole world is in on it, like all the news that are Look, there ain't there ain't that many people that own the news and all the media like you can look it up. You can put them in one little room. It's like less than 100 people. And yes, they're all in on it. But, you know, like I meet people and they're ingrained in wanting to believe in their lies. So when the, when these things are taking place in the world and people are scared, it's kind of like how the scripture says, you know, and you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. It's like knowing the truth. I'm still in the same world that everybody is in, but I've met the king and he told me I was safe no matter what. When he told me, he just told me I was safe no matter what. But now when I'm down here, like... I also know the virus ain't real, but even if it was real, I was safe. And I try to tell people things like this. 
you know, they're believing in lies and they're like, Ken, the virus is real. You know, the news is saying all these people are dying and this, that, and the other. Um, man, I got some sweat on my face. All these people are dying and, you know, and they want to hang on to this because that's their security blanket. They're hoping the world goes back to normal. It ain't going back to normal. And, you know, they want to convince me of their lie, but the truth is always higher than the lie. They're, that's the one power above all principalities, all evil. That's why I say things like, can't nobody, after, after you meet the king, there's levels of knowing the king. There's being in the kingdom. You know what I mean? You've been in the gates. You have spiritual experiences. But there's a different moment that I experienced when I got called into the chambers of the king while he's on, while he's on the throne ruling. And it was because of my decisions with my persecution. I can I know this now because when I was faced with everything, including death, including death of a child, I still rode with God. I sold completely out and I was riding with him to the end. And that's what he liked. And that's why I got summons there. And that's why he gave me this truth. Um. But back to that thing, you know, people wanting to hold on to the lie. See, they try to convince me. It happens all the time when I spread, spread the truth. They want to convince me that their lie is real and my conspiracy is not real. But, you know, when your house is built upon a rock, you know, all these things in the Bible or metaphors, like when Jesus was, was telling Peter after Peter was the disciple that denied him three times. But then, you know, Everybody has a breaking point, and that's when Peter was completely sold out to Christ. When 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 Christ was telling him, "Do you love me?" Feed, and he's like, "Yes, Master. Yes, feed my sheep." And then he asked him again, "Peter, do you love me?" He's like, "You know I do." He's like, "Feed my sheep." He's like, he asked him again, like, "Peter, do you love me?" He's like, "Yes, Rabbi. Why do you keep asking me? Take care of my sheep." But, you know, he was the, also the, 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 the apostle that he said, upon this house, I will build my rock. And, and that means like, you know, he's building a house, the house of David. The, and he wanted it to not be able to budge. And only, only the kind of faith in that spiritual experience of coming face to face with Satan is the kind of faith where it won't budge, where 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 Jesus has built his church behind, behind a rock, metaphorically speaking. And the rock is being a disciple that'll go so hard, they can, they can fling them up on a cross and they'll gladly jump up there because they know the game. Um, you know, so when I, when I encounter these people that want to convince me of their lie, they can't change me because I've been changed. When you meet the King and Father God, and the apostles and they're clapping for you, you have been changed. So they can't change me. And I know they believe that lie Satan has told them, but I know my truth can change them. That's why I say things like, if anybody wants to call my bluff, and, and I know if there's a virus, I know there ain't, but if there's a virus, if you can get me into an ICU, I will hug and kiss everybody they say has the coronavirus repeatedly every day for 30 days. And then you can wait 60 days. And when nothing happens to me, I know that type of experience would open up a person's mind to receiving some real truth. It can shatter those chains of lies that get that Satan has put on a person's head to blind them. Now, God is a merciful God. So I say this repeatedly. There's been, there's, yes, it's the greatest deception you could ever imagine. The church system, most of it on this earth, has been fabricated from keeping you to arrive into the full truth. They give you a little bit a little bit of training, but not enough to where you're ever going to beat Satan. That's when you're playing with, with some real truth. When Satan personally comes to you or he puts his fallen angels on you personally. So 
this church system has, has convinced the world that a person needs to go to B building to get to C Christ when that is completely wrong. I know it's wrong because that isn't what happened in my life. A person can go, can go directly to see Christ. You don't need a building. And when I say building, I'm talking about like the, the church institutions, the church organizations. God will make a, a covenant directly with you. You don't need a pastor. That was the whole point Jesus came. Before he came, there was churches and like a prophet had to lead the church because he was the only one like that had the word. Jesus came born in the flesh so he could release his spirit below the spiritual veil. You know that bit, that barrier they talk about in um, the rich dude in Lazarus when Lazarus is like, like, go tell my brothers and they're like, hey, nobody can cross. Like, I can't come over to you and you can't come over to me because we're separated. That's a metaphor for the spiritual veil where the people in hell are trying to talk to the people in heaven and they're talking back and forth. But like there's a barrier that separates them. Um, I tell you, people, if you're scared. You know, this is nothing to be ashamed of because the system is flawed. The system is flawed. So if you've been going to church your entire life and you feel that there's a lot of fear in you, that's fine. Satan has a fallen angel that is a high ranked one that runs the kingdom of false religious spirits. The, the counterfeit Holy Spirit is the Kundalini spirit. It's very charismatic. It's a very good speaker. It's It knows Satan is a master of psychology, thus a master of manipulating emotions. So a lot of times what people confuse with anointing is emotional entertainment. You've seen people get very emotional like at a concert. And they'll fall out. It's the same emotion that a charismatic person can invoke in another person's soul to where it mimics the Holy Spirit. And I can remember like the past three, the, like the preceding three years before my anointing, God and Satan was both talking to me. Like I can look back now and tell who, who was who, but at the time I didn't. They're very similar. Like the, the, the sounds and the direction. See, like, like Satan, people think like, oh, you know, you know, that wouldn't be Satan. Satan's totally evil. No, he's a slickster. He has to trick you first. Um, if anybody like watch movies, like here's a good one. The movie Focus with, with Will Smith, like a con man. Satan's a good con man. He's the best one there is. He's the leader of the con man. He's the God of this world. He's an evil, sadistic, crazy nutcase. Like, like you wouldn't believe how sick he is. Like, you know, everybody's like, oh, God is love and love. Like how, how, how God is so merciful. Like Satan is the opposite of that. So his, his people that follow him, that he rewards with material things in this world, they have his spirit. And, and that entire kingdom is organized like a military organization, just like a pyramid. Like all, there's more low rank demons than anything. As you move up the pyramid, the people that have demon powers, demon gifts, you know, when you start getting into some, some OGs, some OG, um, Satan agents, that's when they can astro project on you. That's when they do doing rich craft on you and you in a wreck. That's when you get into a relationship with somebody you love and it's great for 60 days, but on the 90th day, you're ready to commit suicide. That's when you start dealing with his top people. That's, you know, to, to give a physical representation of, of like Satan's organization. He got people that are everyday citizens, but then he got a Congress. You know what I mean? And it might be, that's them, 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 them top rank, full grown fallen angels. The one that he has given a new name to, and they know Satan personally. 
and they call on him. And he's like, yeah, man, this dude, we need to take him out. And, they, and them demons put a hit on you. And, you know, th those good Satanists, when they take when they take out a person with the light, Satan rewards them. They might their business deals just get worked out like I've been through it, man. I need people to wake up. So back to, back to that part about, you know, a person does not need to go to B building to get to see Christ. Christ came so you can go directly to him. He can give the spirit directly to you. It's easier. You know, they want to convince you that it's not this easy. It is easy. Say it. See, people have have tried to institutionalize Christ. They've tried to make God in the image of man instead of man trying to see himself in God. Um, have a simple prayer, man. It's, it's God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. God, open my eyes and allow me to see. God, please forgive me and point out what I've been doing in my life that you don't approve of. God, reveal your word to me. God, I'm going to make a step towards you by reading a little bit of wor your word every day. Would you please take some steps towards me and reveal yourself? Because this, this is the only way you're going to make it through the end times, man. God needs to have a personal covenant with you, a deal with you. That's another thing, man. The church, the church has convinced people that if you didn't go to some theology school, that only certain people are anointed. I promise you, I didn't pick this for it's God that has chosen me. For, for you, you didn't, I didn't choose God. God has chosen me and pulled me out of the world and ordained me to be a prophet, to speak to the people. I would have never guessed this in my life, man. I've, 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 for 39 years, I was the anti, there is no God. Satan had blinded me from birth. I had experienced so many things as a child, just so many things by age five years old, I was conscious saying things like if there was a God, he wouldn't let a little kid do things like this because I've done nothing to deserve this. I was saying things like that at five years old, but Satan in the spirit realm, there's no time and no space. So he knew God had a plan for me and he'd been trying to take me out my entire life so I couldn't reach this moment and give these type of words that will help people because it, the, the words of truth are powerful. They will change your life. But once you have it, you now have the ability to change others' lives. And it really, the word of God is life. And when you have it in you, you can give it to another and, and man, I experienced this so Often, it still brings me to tears that the that that Father God has given me a sharp sword that when I, I can speak to some people, he'll give me something to say personal about them that they won't know how I said it. And the beauty of it is I won't even know. He'll tell me later after they break down crying from what I told them. He'll tell me later what it was what it meant to them and why they cry an outbreak. It happens to me over and over and over again. And I'll tell you right now, that feeling alone is worth any material possession. Just having that feeling alone a couple times, I get to have it all the time. It happens to me often, man. I am blessed and I know it. Um, it wasn't easy to get to where I am. There was a lot, man, there was a lifetime of persecution and a lot of heartache to get here. But I realize now that the most high God has chosen me for something special in the end of, in the end of the world. And I know, and I know what, I know what it is. So, you know, I appreciate, um, all the positive feedback that I, that, that I get from my viewers that have been with me since the beginning. And some of you guys that have been with me, you know, more recently, I appreciate that. I appreciate that all, man. But, you know, we're going to see, we're going to see some more horrible things. 
a lot of horrible things. But pray to God directly. Direct relationships is what it's about. He likes that on authenticity, that one-on-one. You do not want to be standing in his presence and him tell you, I've never known you. You don't want that feeling. Um, help people. This is a time to help people. And you need to help people because it's the right thing to do. See, God knows. He knows things about you. And a lot of people will help other people because l l let me show you how, how Satan masks. People want to help people because, well, God says it's the right thing to do. So I'm going to do it because I know he's watching me. That ain't the right reason to help people. There, there, there's a, there's a, a moment where you've been through enough persecution and you realize you've been walking your entire life to get to that cross. And when you get to that cross and you read the, the true God, your flesh don't matter no more because your spirit is lit. And I I'm blessed to, to experience today that I help people only because they need help. And, and one of the ways, one of the ways I notice um, that in me is, is when you are truly helping people, you spend time and see what they really need. See, a lot of times people just want to have a generic type of charity. They want to, well, every Thursday I go feed the homeless. You know, I talked to a homeless guy tonight. His foot was broken. I mean, I had food, but his foot was broken. He couldn't even walk over and get the food from me. I brought it to him. But now I realize he needs more help. If I give him all the food in the world for the next few weeks, I haven't done enough. Because he needs something else. There's another way I can help him. And Father God has blessed me so big in my life that I am sitting on resources to help people. And it's, kind, it's the kind of resources of they'll never run out. So I want to tell you a little parable about that. The, um, the prodigal son, when he comes back home, that is a person that has turned away from, from wickedness of sin. And they have started to walk back home towards God and righteousness. And I've spiritually experienced this, where when I came home, he ran out and met me more than halfway. And just like the book says, he gave me the sandals. Man, King Jesus is the greatest. I was beaten destitute and I came back home. King Jesus gave me the royal robe off of his back. That's the kind of love when you come home, he gives you. And he gave me the ring. And when you have a ring, every child of God has a ring in the kingdom. And a ring is a signet. It's a sign you belong to a kingdom. It's got, it's got the title on it. God of heaven and earth. It's got his name on it. Jesus Christ. And it's got the, you know, it's got all of his territory. The king of kings. God of heaven and earth. His realm. And when you have that ring, you know that your father owns a thousand hills and all the cattle and the whole earth. So it doesn't matter when I deplete my resources. Father God will just replenish them and say, Ken, get out there and do it again. You worry about my business and I'll make sure you have the means to accomplish my business. So this is the time to be helping people. And God's telling you, if there's conviction in your heart when you walk past a person in need, and you you want me to tell you, want me to tell you a little a little worldly, a little worldly way you know you convicted is when you can't walk past a homeless person and stare them in the eye. You turn your head the other way. You know, you want to act like you don't see them and you hope they don't see you. You know what I mean? You'll be like, I'll feed another homeless person next week when we do the food pantry. That's the Holy Spirit in you convicting you. You 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 want to get to some truth every 
every time it starts to nudge on you and tell you, help this person, stop, give this person a ride. It ain't going to be everybody. Look, it's, 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 it's a lot of Satan's people out here too. I help them sometimes, but not all the time. I'm really after, I'm really after the kingdom people. Father God then told me, King, get our, get our people. You know what I mean? So I'm going to get our people first. And then I'll go after somebody else. I'm getting the kingdom's people first. You know what I mean? If I'm wrong, Father God will tell me. But he didn't tell me, get ours first. You know what I mean? The, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. You know what that's mean? You know what that means? There ain't many foot soldiers out there saving. There's a bunch of people in need of a physician, but only a few doctors. So it's a spiritual bloodline thing. You know, people want to talk about it's a race war in the world. There's only one war. It's the ancient war. It's the war that's only the war that was, the war that is, and the, and, and the war that's about to end. It's the spiritual war, of the kingdoms, the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of Satan. That's the only war there is. And I've been blessed with spiritual sight. So I get to see our people. I don't have to waste my time trying to figure out they look different to me. They look like my brother. They look like my sister. And I know them. From, from a great distance, I know them. And Father God will tell me what they need before I even get my first word out of, their, out of my mouth. So, man, I encourage you, all of you, during these end times to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Turn away from wickedness. Ask Father God to open your eyes so that you may see. It's important. You want to be on the right side of this thing. Trust me. This, you know, this world is ending and there's going to be a new world. People think they're bringing in the new world order. It's going to be a new government. It's just not the one Satan thinks. I appreciate you guys watching this message. I had to get this one out. Till next time, fam, you stay equipped in the full armor of God, covered in the blood, filled with the spirit in the name of the son and the power of the true living God. He lives in you. Your body is the temple. And where two or more are gathered in his name and the Holy Spirit gets so powerful, you will witness the miraculous Miracle after miracle after supernatural experience. Till next time, fam, stay blessed. I am KP and I'm out. Peace.